So now let's move on to the requirement collection phase in detail. So now we'll see all the phases of software development life cycle and now I'm going to show you the documents too. So the sample documents I'm going to show you so almost uh, for every project the concepts of the documents remains the same. The fields of the document remains the same. Maybe the content is different but overall you'll get an idea on the documents after this session. So now we'll be going ahead with the requirement collection the very first phase. So in this phase basically the requirement will be collected from the client. I guess you people know it. So after collecting the requirements we'll be building them as a documentation format known as BRS or user requirement specification. Even we can call that as a customer requirement specification too. anything. So what exactly this contains? What is built in this document? Basically in this document the high level uh, business flow or else in a simple way I can say that like what are the types of users client want and what are the permissions for him and what are the services you want to give to the client means the thing the brief discretion will be provided in this BRS document no technicalities no functionalities will be given in the BRS document only the things like what services what users you want what are the user permissions so only this like I mean to say the user requirements will be given and further it will be trimmed or else further it will be enhanced as functionalities in the next phase okay so here I am going to show you one BRS document of some banking uh, application a sample uh, banking application where we will get some idea on how exactly a BRS document looks like okay so BRS document first thing it is just a client needs just a business requirements no functionalities will be given this is the primary thing what we need to understand clear yes so now let's have a look on the documentation before going ahead with the other topic and the slides what you are seeing on the screen and all the documents what I am showing you on the video you can download it from resources section all the documents you can download it from the resources section I am going to provide you all the documents what we are seeing on the screen Now this is a sample BRS application of some online banking system. Here we can see that there is an online business, online banking system and it is a introduction what has given and the documents referred and the details of the documentation also given. This is a business requirement specification document BRS and this is an introduction to the bank and about that bank and the history of the bank. If you come down it is saying that admin. So admin is a user, admin is a user, here banker is a user, if you come down customer is a user, like this. If you can see here, it is saying that the system would involve in following modules, admin, banker, personal, corporate, NRI or international services as a part of first release. Okay, so first release we will be concentrating on the following features like admin task. Banker task, customer task for personal banking. Clear? So we'll be completely concentrating on this admin task in our coming course. Now, if you can have a look on this, it is saying that there is a user called admin and there is admin privileges or else admin task. Admin can create a new branch. New branch here. By using admin module, admin can create, delete, or modify branches according to the requirements. Now it is clearly say that. A admin can move on to the branches module. In that branches module, he can create a he can create a branch, a new branch he can create it. But what is the process for it? They haven't specified it. So just it's a requirement. That's it. So this I am going to show you. Just have a look on this. This part creating a new branch. I am going to show you in FRS document how neatly it has presented how the functionality has developed in the FRS you can easily get the difference there clear so here only in the documentation format they are going to give us the information like what client want so in this scenario client want admin as a user and this user has a permissions to create a new branches 
you can modify it you can delete it same like a users also if you can come here the banker task has been provided if you can have a look on this customers flow customer is a user he can perform some personal banking task here they have given the money transfer so he can transfer the money to his account or to some other account using any ft or imps but what the process of performing the imps what the process of performing the any ft that has been not provided here and even you can see that here the client is giving that a requirement saying that the users should have a accessibility to pay their utility bills but what is the process of to paying the utility bills what is the functionality for it that will be not provided in the brs that is what i mean to say in the brs document literally the business needs will be given the high level business needs will be given like see here if we have a look on this uh, document like there should be access for the user 24 into 7 to checking the balance and uh, to check the transfer history and there should be option to fund transfer between the accounts and as well as they can pay the money using NEFT or IMPS and ability to pay the utility bills and take the print of our transactions. So this is what actually the BRS document looks like. A sample document just to explain you how it looks like. So once after the BRS document is reviewed, once if you feel that in a feasibility study if everything is fine then the project is intaken. Once the project is intaken there basically service level agreement will be taken up where this agreement will be made between company and client and this agreement really applies throughout the life cycle not only life cycle this is agreement which is directly related to the software and this agreement will be live until the software is live as simple as that. okay yeah this is what service level agreement like it has all the things all the terms and conditions between client and company so once after done once after the feasibility study if everything is accepted then we'll move on to the next phase that is requirement analysis phase in this requirement analysis phase system analyst is going to participate here please guys please concentrate on this topic it's a very very important one system analyst will participate and is going to develop a document called functional requirement specification or even we can call it as a system requirement specification too either functional requirements or system requirements anything is one and the same so here it literally says that in this document the functionalities will be given up functionalities so this is basically developed by analyst but as it's a very important document client will also involve in some cases and will take the help of the senior bas and the senior developers will also sit with us and we'll be trying to develop the functionalities for that. There will be a lot of reviews on it that we'll be discussing as you go into the subject. And it's also known as a good FRS is equal to good project. If you have an excellent functional requirement specification document, obviously your turns, your application turns into excellent. Yes, let me explain you a simple scenario. So the, the example what I am trying to give you, this type of scenarios may not exist in the organization just to give you an idea like how important the FRS. I'm trying to give out this example, but the scenarios may or may not occur. May not occur in a lot of cases. Okay. So now let's uh, go ahead and let's see how to work with that. Let's assume that uh, our system analyst has uh, our system analyst has developed a FRS document, but but maybe he has misunderstood the requirements or unknowingly he has made some mistake in the FRS document. Means he had developed a document with some mistake in it. It may be the understanding problem, it may be a communication error, so whatever it may be, but he has developed a document with some error. This functionality document itself has an error. Now, so obviously, this document will be given to the developer. And developer developed an application with that wrong functionality only. Why? Because that is literally given in the FRS document. As simple as that. So he is going to develop that with that mistake only. Now, it will be moved into the once application is developed, it will be given to the testing team. Even testing team will approve that mistake. Why? Because that is given in the FRS document. So as our tester's point of view you are going to test an application to check how what is working according to the client requirements that is nothing but the functionalities in the functionalities it is given as a mistake so even will approve it at the end 
client will receive a wrong project client will receive a wrong project what is the reason because there is a problem with the frs document so that has turned directly giving a bug at the client's end so if you have a good frs document obviously your application turns into good if you have a bad application bad frs document it turns as a bad application as simple as that now in the next video or else in the next class i'm going to show you how the frs document looks like so let's have a look on our frs document now